So, uh, this film <laughs> is uh, tough. <laughs> and there's, uh, I missed it in Cannes, so I'm, I'm glad to finally catch it here. Mm -hmm. And I was struck by how there's so much rage in this character. Um, is that, was that the main driver for you? This, this pure emotional overflow of this, uh, which is simmering uh, for most of the film uh, under the surface. Was that the um, emotional focal point for you? Uh, well, well, I think I enjoyed like him being like uh, some kind of um, a boiling pot. Uh, <laughs> but, but I think that, I mean, the drive for me was more uh, the sort of the, 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 the loving side of it or, or the love story, you know, the love story towards his, um, his grandchild, uh, which was this pure, pure and simple love, unconditional love. And then, uh, and then uh, this love story of, towards his, uh, his wife that had, had left him behind uh, when, when she died in an accident. And uh, this more complex love that he had with her, I think these two things were, were like, you know, my my main drive, mm -hmm. you know, throughout the film within this, you know, white world. Uh, but but absolutely, I, I I was fascinated by by all of these feelings uh, left behind in Inkiman. You know, you know the the anger, the sorrow, the 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 doubt. You mm -hmm. know, he he begins to doubt you know everything you know and then and, and that was absolutely something i enjoyed yeah. okay and for both of you what's your impression of how this man was before this tragedy like how much of this was mm -hmm. still a factor in his psychology because there's a there's a um, i think the film alludes to the idea also you said it, it was this love and then this love needs to be sort of redirected after this this change Mm -hmm. um, but was this a functional man before? Because mm -hmm. maybe even the love that he felt for his wife um, was somehow uh, poisonous. Like this, this man has something about him that is. Mm. I don't. I'm curious if for you mm -hmm. this the, the entire story starts after this tragedy, mm -hmm. or if you see him. Uh, an adjusted uh, man uh, before. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Uh, I have my ideas about him. I mm -hmm. And uh, even we, we didn't, didn't we, we didn't really talk about the, 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 the early days. <laughs> but I think he's kind of uh, he he was a simple man in that sense uh, that what matters to him is to have. A job and uh, a house to live in and a good wife, mm -hmm. children. That's like very important for him. And when one of these things, like his wife, is taken from him, he was not in the picture. So he he got kind of mad, and uh, he had to uh, go uh, have a vacation from his job as a head of the police in this part of the country. So he was, uh, I think he was maybe not the most cheerful person in the world, but, uh, you know, but, but very stable. Mm -hmm. How did you modulate your performance for those moments of outburst and, and, and more difficulty with, in relation with the girl? So for example, I'm thinking of the bed, uh, bedtime story. Mm -hmm of that, that uh, fight uh, next to the car. This is a man that is sort of internalizing all of this and then it comes out suddenly in, in this um, uh, warring and, and uh, uh, these warring ways. And how was that uh, doable for you in relation to a, a scene partner that obviously also needed to um, be protected by that at the same time. I'm, uh, for me, uh, I mean, it's just to be well prepared and to be open on set, on when really open, uh, and uh, also this, this, this is a build-up between us, 
and uh, also between uh, my fellow actors. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then we, and I'm very happy that we he he introduced shoots the scene again and again and again, uh, even, though he, he, even though he's happy, mm -hmm. but uh, we are going to reach the, the level that we are above level, you know, above, you know, we're always looking for something, some, some miracles. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, A great surprise for you. Yeah. So, so uh, we, we do that together and, and uh, so we... I mean, every scene, every shot is, is even very different from each other. But then, mm -hmm. yeah. it's exploring, you know, exploring the unknown, like uh, trying to be surprised or, mm -hmm. or uh, and having fun also, you know, enjoying the process. I think it's important sometimes too. Yeah. I mean, it's serious sometimes, but it's also fun and, uh, and exciting. Exciting, yeah. yeah. I'm thinking of the way that you seem to portray. Um, the transformation that there are moments in the in the film, not not in the characters themselves, but in the world around them. So I'm thinking of the rock uh, mm -hmm. falling, oh, yeah. the weather changing, and even the blood uh, mm -hmm. on your finger spreading. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How and it feels like that's the those are moments in which the this world stops to witness this mm -hmm. sort of flow, which is otherwise negated by. Um, this, this oppressive um, psychology of the character who's skipping. Mm. Um, tell me about the more visual side of how you try to integrate these things together. Mm. I, I think I think I uh, I remember like growing up and you know reading books, and I think I I I, I tended to relate to the books that you know explain the world around the character, you know by if they wanted to portray the character and the interior of the character, they sort of, they explained the world around him, mm -hmm. you know. And I think I've always, like, um, related to that or liked that, you know. Like, uh, I, I think you, yeah, and I think, um, I think I just, uh, I think I always feel like, you know, everything is very important, you know. Everything is just as important, you know. The dialogue is just as important as the, Location and the, the sound is just as important as mm -hmm. the, the 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 visuals and you know you know what I mean it's like um, paying attention to everything like the small details also so so we really like uh, I have this thing like when I'm when I'm writing a scene it's very hard for me to stop writing you know because I always feel like there's something more happening you know what ca you know this then this happens and then this happens and it's hard for me to like um, stop writing a scene because if they always be so they, they they tend to be very long you know they just mm -hmm. keep going so it's uh, sometimes I just like that feeling you know you know not knowing where it's going but still just following it because it's just feels interesting or okay. or exciting you know I just uh, I think it's just that feeling and these things all come from the script or while shooting yeah, I mean, we sort of integrated the environment. Uh, I, I think they're all written in the script. I mean, I think we follow. I think we're quite true to the script. Mm -hmm. I think we. I mean, not saying that. I mean, we're very open for for whatever happens, you know. But I think we're very true to the mm -hmm. to the script through throughout the whole process. Um, but but still, you know, with an open mind and playfulness. Mm -hmm. So so we're trying also to capture things. Okay. You know, to keep an energy and keep the film alive, you know. And I understand that you were part of this since the beginning because you wrote um, the script uh, already with him in mind. So you, in a way, you, you inhabited the character ahead of time. And were you a part of the development throughout? Or it was just a matter of you are no. going to be this, but you will see it when it's done? Yeah, I was just there. there uh, uh, you know, waiting, <laughs> and you know, I was receiving all kinds of stuff from him. Uh, he was sending me, and even I was sending him what I was listening to, what he was uh, watching, uh, some, you know, and also some images, some, some, something that he was preparing in his mind, and he was sending me ideas and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah, so I was just taking it in slowly and. Uh, of course, it matters. Mm -hmm. It really matters. And uh, 
it's kind of funny that this is a world where there's no support system for these people because they are the they are the law and order and that goes completely wrong but also on 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 the level of helping these people um, processing it, it feels that they're left mm. completely alone by uh, there should be a framework mm. uh, and the only framework is um, is, is sessions with this uh, and then even those sessions with the doctor the doctor is taking away and all that's left is the computer that uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. is mashes yeah. is that necessary because is that necessary <coughs> to take away all sorts of um, things uh, Blockers and and, yeah. and and support. Um, I think so. There's for so this there, to happen, there, there's so much noise, you know. You know, I, th I think there's so much noise. I think you know, if you're if you're if you're supposed to focus on something, like uh, and really, you know, go deep, you know, into something, uh, and work with very like basic feelings. And I, th I think it's always helpful to like uh, take away things, you know, mm. because there's so much noise and there's so much, you know, so much speed. I, th I, really, I really like taking things away, you know, just simplifying things. Uh, I think it, for me personally, I, I feel like I'm, I'm able to, to go deeper by doing that. Um, not having too much, many characters, not having too many locations, not having too many. I, I feel like I can, you know, by doing that uh, somehow, you know, give a, a sharper um, uh, direction and sharper um, focus, I think. Mm -hmm. um. And the 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 scene at the end with the tunnel, um, which I found very peculiar, and and I think it's so striking because the film is so imprisoned in this uh, domestic settings, these houses, these flats, this even the jail itself in which uh, the two policemen get locked into. Um, but even the houses with no jails inside are, are in a way a uh, sort of self-imposed prison. And then at the end there's this movement uh, through something for the first time. Can you tell me how that, like again visually and, and the concept of bringing that to the climax of the film, how did you envision that? I, I think I always had like a, you know, I, I think this, the, the, that space and that location was a very pivotal part in the whole project, The mm. White White Day. I think it was like, uh, I remember driving there and it's it's the highest uh, gravel, do you say gravel road or? or mm. uh, the in high, the East Fjord. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's like the highest road in Iceland with the, with with that that is like gravel i can can't find the word and it's um so so when it's cloudy or you know it's completely white you know you you can't you can only see like 1 meter in front of you you know so i i always remember like driving up there and feeling like this strange eerie feeling you know it it's both beautiful but at the same time it's there's you know there's something hidden there or so, there's something not spooky but just uh, eerie mm -hmm. and um, so so when I was writing I I always was very stimulated when I was there and I knew there was something about this beautiful tunnel that was just closed it just closed the, the same year that we started filming so it's not used anymore it's completely locked you know and it's supposed to just stay there or are they going to yeah it's just going to stay there and um, so I was, uh, it was, it just always felt like a very important place mm -hmm. in the film. And I, and I knew that it, it played a pivotal part in the, in the, in the narrative. And, uh, and I sort of just went there and wrote and, uh, and the scene with, with Ingeminder and Salka, the, the heart of the film just grew, you know, and, 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 and the, and the scene just, you know, emerged and, um, and surprised me. I, I, I didn't know that it was gonna, mm. I, I, I didn't have an ending for the film, you know, when I was working on it. You know, I, I had no idea what, what was gonna happen or, you know, and I was afraid that, you know, that she was gonna die or he was gonna, you know, I, I had no idea. So, yeah. I like the moment where it's also very unclear for the viewer 
in the sense that you could feel the film going in many different directions with that ending and there's mm -hmm. a shot of the car after he's injured mm -hmm. uh, by the other man and he's, he's trying to uh, bandage himself yeah and there's a shot of the car which mirrors the the, the initial incident yeah and you think of this sense of circularity mm -hmm. uh, about it which uh, yeah but it's not it's not it's only hinted at it's not making yeah, it's uh, not like over yeah, yeah. <laughs> you shot on film right yeah we, we shot it on uh, on 35 millimeter mm -hmm. uh, the, the the prologue of the film like the opening the two years of the house and mm -hmm. the seasons going by was shot on 35 uh, uh, anamorphic for oh, perf right. and and then the rest of the film uh, the principal photography was shot on um, super 35 right. you want to continue doing that uh, I think uh, I think my, our next project is going to be another format. I mean, it's going to be film 35, but it's going to be another aspect ratio, I think. Uh, but I I really I really love the. I just really love the the feel and and the, of the film of the celluloid and and I love the latitude of it and I love how forgiving it is and beautiful and yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just love it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you so much. Thank you.